When was the last time you paused and asked yourself, why? In the structured monotony of life, we complete assignment after assignment, we buy the same groceries and clothes, driving from place to place, scroll through the same social media apps, seemingly as to without thought as why we are really even doing it. And recently I began to ask my own questions as to why, and the thought of baseball came up. Since 2018, I have been an avid Tampa Bay Rays fan. The sabermetric approach intrigued my interest to the game of baseball due to the absurdity of it, because analytics essentially is a belief that in a sport full of infinite possibilities, that there are quantifiable numbers that can be used to explain it. However, after two seasons of heartbreak, I paused and asked myself, why baseball? Was it the towering home runs, the miraculous diving catches, or the gravity-defying curveballs? The more I reflected on the question, I kept coming back to one singular moment. The truth is, I am a cynical man. I expect disappointment everywhere I go, whether that's cynicism shown toward work, school, or a baseball team, frankly. And heading into the 2020 divisional series between the empire that is the Yankees versus the Rays, I expect a disappointment, especially after a demoralizing Game 4 loss. The 2020 ALDS between the Rays and the Yanks felt like more than just another playoff series. Rather, it was a battle of ideologies. It was a deep-pocketed Yankees led by a star-studded cast and a big market city appeal versus the Rays, a small market team with a ragtag group of largely unknown baseball players. The payroll gap between these two teams is $84 million, and at face value this shouldn't even be a fight. Yet here we are. Baseball essentially is 162 days of conflict that eventually unravel into one magnificent story. So when we approach the bottom of the 8th inning of Game 5, we are witnessing the conflict eclipse into the climax. But who are the players on the field? James D. Key in his book, Chronicles of the Frigate Macedonia, writes, Frigates are rarely interesting in and of themselves. Rather, it is the people who have sailed them. In the same way, I believe we could say the same about the game of baseball. Baseball is rarely interesting in and of itself. Rather, it is the people who play the game. Mike Brasso is down early in the count 0-2. And in the weirdly convoluted 2020 COVID shortened season, they remained one constant to life and to baseball. And that is, hitters become a shell of themselves when they are down an 0-2 count. At a league-wide rate, the hitters had batted at an abysmal 149 batting average, 158 on base percentage, and 255 slugging. The difference between a hitter at an 0-2 count in 2020 versus the league average hitter in 2020 is dramatic to say the least. Nearly every statistic has dropped in half when down 0-2. But battling from behind is something Brasso is familiar with. Standing at 5'11", Brasso was ruled as too short for professional ball, and went on to attend Oakland University in Michigan. A university that has boasted a pedigree of a single professional baseball player in its 55 years of existence. After an amazing four-year career at Oakland University, Brasso would look toward the draft. Three days and 40 agonizingly long rounds later, and Brasso would go undrafted. 1,216 players were deemed as better options than him. The reality of the situation is that Brasso is a four-year college graduate who has attracted no interest from MLB teams. So that's the end of the dream, right? A 22-year-old Midwestern kid who graduated as a student athlete with honors. Time to start looking for a job and start life, right? A few days after the draft passes by when suddenly Brasso gets a call. It's the Tampa Bay Rays. They are short a few infielders for their rookie ball team in Port Charlotte, the lowest level of professional baseball. Players of Brasso's undrafted pedigree will typically receive the league minimum, which as of 2016 for a minor league baseball player is below the federal minimum wage. As a 22-year-old senior in college myself, I couldn't help but imagine how difficult this decision must have been for Brasso. Society would have labeled this as largely a childish and immature act for chasing such an ambition. Yet fast forward four years later and Brasso is standing at the plate in the climax of the series. And while he's still battling the odds as he fouls off a 99 mile per hour fastball and battles back to even the count to 2-2. Two two. Since 2016, Brasso has gruesomely battled his way through the minors, starting at the lowest possible level and is now starting at the lowest possible position of an 0-2 count. Baseball has a beautiful way of writing itself. For the past four years, Brasso has been developed from the Rays to excel at one thing. Destroy left-handed pitchers.
This is simply the Rays' method of doing things. They find value in overlooked players and utilize their strengths by placing them in situations that they thrive in. On the counterintuitive, we have Arolas Chapman and the New York Yankees. The Yankees are a team oriented on the basis of heavy spending in order to win a World Series. This mindset and market demands results in action. If there's a star on the free agent market, you can rest assured that the Yankees will be in the conversation. Chapman and Brasso could not have had more different uprisings. While Chapman is one of the faces of the league, his journey is equally as important and unlikely as Brasso's. Chapman began playing baseball at the age of 15 and shortly after would go on to play for his national team. After throwing an astonishing 102 miles per hour as a teenager, this made Chapman one of the most desirable prospects in the baseball industry. However, he was born in Cuba. Being caught defecting from Cuba could result in being thrown in prison for decades in inhumane conditions, or in Chapman's case, being forced to serve as a political representative, where every minuscule aspect of his life was controlled in Cuba. Three attempts later, and Chapman, a 20-year-old kid with nothing but his million-dollar arm, fled the country. Once Chapman made it to America, he was offered $30 million to sign with the Cincinnati Reds, and was ranked in the top 100 prospects before he had even thrown a professional pitch. A decade of closing dominance later, and Chapman signed a contract with the Yankees to make him the highest paid closer in baseball history. Chapman knows the sheer ability of his fastball, and within his career has used it to send a message to opposing teams. And earlier this season, on September 1st, Chapman threw at Brasso. The rivalry between the Rays and the Yanks have been brewing for years and years up to this point, and this playoff series simply serves as a median to brawl it out. Both Chapman and Brasso have had treacherous journeys up to this point each with their own individual struggles. It's the star power, the ideal athlete who possesses the philosophy but scouts at all, held back by a tyrant government system. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have Brasseau, who has been rejected at every corner, who doesn't possess the tangibles of a typical professional athlete, and who has been given nothing yet battled through adversity to get to the highest level of baseball. Both players are symbolic of their represented teams. The at-bat itself has gone through its twists and turns. The count is now full at 3 and 2. The tension fills the gap left by the empty stands. Also, never a prospect, but he just keeps delivering. He's earned his way first on a big league roster and now on a postseason roster. Hit 302 this year. He destroyed left handed pitchers. Chapman, no regular lefty. Even up to the release of the pitch, Brasso is still being overshadowed. Just how it has been his whole career. 3 2, Brasso sends one into left field. Gardner going back, and it is up and gone! Mike Brasso has homered, and the Rays have a 2 to 1 lead. What a moment for Brasso! Tampa Bay on. When people ask me, why baseball? It's these series of events, the symbolism, the hidden beauty, the conflict and tension. You cannot write a better narrative than this. Baseball, in a weirdly subordinate and abstract way, has helped me through my cynicism. Never have I been happier to be wrong about something. This is why baseball. <laughs>